Good evening. Welcome back to Community Bible Study. Please join us tonight as we look at the first 23 verses of chapter 21 of the Gospel according to John. Let's pray. Holy Father, what a great journey it's been. What a what a great story, made even more so because it's a true story, because it's history, because it's it's your story. Thank you, Father, for causing John to write down what you wanted him to say. Not so much for John, but but for us. For all those from John to now and those from from now until you return, that we might that we might have a clearer picture of of who you are and a greater appreciation for the good news that you bring to us. Father, tonight we ask that you allow us to finish strong for this lesson and the next, that, that you be the speaker, that you make the words into the words that you would have said, that what we hear with our ears we might understand in our mind and Believe in our heart and practice with our hands. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, okay. Um, you ever been fishing? I'm sure you have. You ever been ice fishing? I've never been ice fishing. So I enjoyed the, the story I heard recently about a rather inebriated rice ice fisherman who drilled a hole in the ice and peered into the hole and as he was looking down at the hole, he heard a loud voice from up above say, there's no fish down there. Startled, the, the ice fisherman walked a few steps away and drilled another hole and, and peered down in the hole. And as he was looking down in there for fish, he, he heard the voice again, boom out from above. There's no fish down there. Exasperated the Inebriated ice fisherman walked a good 50 feet away, drilled a third hole, and he's just peering down in the hole. The voice boomed out once again, there's no fish down there. Poor guy looked up and said, is that you, God? The voice said, no, you idiot. It's the ice rink manager. Oh well, you, you know as you as you were reading uh, chapter twenty one of John's Gospel, you you may be thinking that is this an add on? Was this was this done later? Or is, is this really part of the gospel? It seems to me the gospel, according to John, could have ended very easily back in in chapter twenty at the at the end of chapter twenty and. And that's understandable because it seems like chapter 21 is kind of a PS, kind of a, a postscript to John's gospel. As I got to thinking about it, I kind of surmised that, that chapters 1 through 19 are, are similar to, to the way we structure our talks, to the what part of our talks. Chapter 20 is, is kind of like the so what part of our talks. And chapter 21 may be kind of like the now what part of our talks. And the scene we, we pick up at the end of, of actually Matthew at chapter 20, 28, where, where we learn that Jesus had told the women to go tell his disciples, go to Galilee, go to the Sea of Galilee, where they will see me. Sea of Galilee, that's, that's the same place that Jesus first called Peter, James, and John to be his disciples. It's, it's the same place that Jesus had fed the 5,000. And so now what? I, I kind of think that chapter 21 is about fishing and following and feeding, all of those. That's what chapter 21 is about, fishing and following and feeding. Fishing is the what, uh, following is the so what, and feeding is the now what. For a disciple, 
fishes and follows and feeds at the behest of his Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go fishing. Peter and at least seven of his fellow disciples are waiting on the shore of the Sea of Galilee for, for Jesus. And, and Simon Peter says to him, I'm going out to fish. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going fishing. I said, oh, okay, we don't have anything else to do. We'll go, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, I don't, they're tired of waiting. They don't know what's going on. And they're tired of watching reruns on TV. And they did what they know how to do on their own. And that is fish. But, but I kind of think they forgot chapter 15 where, where Jesus says, Without me, you can accomplish nothing good. So they went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Hey, hey, hey guys, friends, boys, do you have any fish? <laughs> they answered, No. Does it look like it? See our empty boat? What's it to you, buddy? Who's asking? Are you H-E butt? You, you're looking for fish in the fish market of your grocery store? They didn't recognize Jesus. That's understandable. Look, man, they're, they're tired. They're blurry-eyed. There's a, a mist coming off the sea. It's, it's a gray, dusky dawn. And Jesus is 100 yards away. But Jesus says, Hey, guys, look, I, I got some advice for you. Uh, do this. Uh, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. <laughs> I can just see that. We're tired. Look, let's humor the guy. But, but what ends up is their obedience to the word of the Lord was rewarded. That's a good lesson for me. If I cast my net where and how Jesus directs, he's responsible for the catch. Verse 7, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. He goes, I get it, deja vu all over again. You remember the last time we did this? I'll bet that's Jesus. I, it is Jesus. I'd, I'd bet my life on it. Of course, of course, it's John is the first one that recognizes the Lord As soon as Simon Peter heard John say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just like the scene at the tomb, right? John recognizes Jesus first, and then Peter pushes John aside and jumps in. Maybe, maybe Peter is remembering the, the instant back in Matthew 14 where where the disciples were rowing uh, across the sea in a storm and Jesus comes comes walking on the water and and asks Jesus to come to him and I mean John uh, Peter to come to him and and Peter gets out of the boat and momentarily walks on the water and then he sinks and and maybe Peter says hey I remember that this time I'm walking all the way to Jesus <laughs> maybe have you seen the pictures of those those ducks, those those birds that as they take off from the lake, they, they run across the top of the water. I kind of think that maybe that's Peter. Right across the top of the water, right? It, it may be the fastest 100-meter freestyle ever. You know, Michael Phelps, eat your heart out. <laughs> The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. Thanks, Peter, for the help. Uh, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. I, I got a feeling that's Kingsford Charcoal Briquettes, right? I mean, get it? I, that's where they got the name, right? Kingsford Charcoal Briquettes. <laughs> I, I, where'd the fish come from that are already on the grill, right? 
maybe, maybe Jesus has said, okay, all you fish out in the sea, 153 of you, jump in the net. And three of you, strip off your scales and jump on the grill. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so, so what's the point? Is it, is it that this is the first Christian potluck dinner? <laughs> I, I don't think so. so. So what about 153? Is it about numerology? Trying to figure out what those numbers add up to or multiply by or divide into or... You know, it's, it's just like us, right? Fretting over details and losing the significance that Jesus is alive and he wants a relationship with us. So it seems to me that the point is this, is that no matter how far you've rowed your boat away from Jesus, no matter how far you've drifted away from the Lord, he calls you back into a relationship with him. I think also this is a reminder from Jesus that of what he had told the disciples at the beginning is, is that you are, you are fishermen, but but now I will make you fishers of men. Your, your profession, guys, may be fishing, but your, but your purpose is fishing for men. So what? So I think Jesus now changes the topic from profession to purpose, from fishing to following, as he gives them a fishing tip. Hey, guys, if you want to fish the best way, follow the master fisherman. When they had finished eating, Jesus took Peter aside and said to him, simply follow me. The Greek word there for follow is, is in the tense of follow me and keep on following me and continuously follow me and don't stop following me. Keep on following me to live a life of purpose. But Peter, like us, once again, takes his focus off of Jesus and looks around and says, Hey, Jesus, what, what about that guy that's following him? What about him? <laughs> Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. You must follow me. What is he to you, says Jesus? You must follow me. The, the Greek is emphatic. You, me, follow. We're like Peter, aren't we? We'll, we'll dream up any excuse not to follow closely by Jesus, not to abide, not to obey. Yeah, Jesus, I want to follow you, but, but I've got a job. Yeah, J Jesus, I... I'd like to follow you, but I've got a, a family to feed. Yeah, Jesus, I, I'd like to follow you, but i I got to think about what others might think. Jesus, I'd like to follow you, but, but first answer for me. What about the heathen in Africa? You know, comparison is the favorite pastime of Christians. What about him? Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, pay attention to your own walk and quit the comparisons. And Jesus says, you must follow me, not someone else, not something else. You must follow me. That's what counts the most. Put me as your priority. Add purpose to your profession meaning to your job. If you add Jesus to what you're doing, then, then it will go well. Be more than a mere believer, says Jesus. Be a disciple and be a disciple maker. How? By knowing his word and then by doing his word. So now what? 
And Jesus now moves from profession to purpose to practice, from fishing to following to feeding. As Jesus says to Peter, you know, I, I've got to tell you, Peter, I've got to be honest with you. I've got to come clean, buddy. I'm, I'm sorely disappointed in you. I, I, I can't believe you denied me. And you, and you did it three times. What a failure you are, Peter. <laughs> not. <laughs> no, he, he did not. Say, I might have said that. If you're honest, you might have said that. Jesus didn't say that. You know, Peter writes in his first epistle, love covers a multitude of sins. And I think, I think maybe he learned that lesson here. In three questions, Jesus gives Peter three chances to reaffirm his love for Jesus. Three times he asks, do you love me? Three times Peter says, yes, you know that I love you. But again, we can get bogged down in the details. But what's the difference between agapeo and phileo? Isn't there a difference between willful, purposeful love and tender, affectionate love? Yeah, and isn't there a difference between perfect supernatural love and, and emotional, natural love? Isn't one better than the other? Let's remember two things here. Uh, first of all is that, is that Jesus is probably speaking in Aramaic and John is translating it into the Greek. But secondly, and much more importantly, each time Peter doesn't say, No, Jesus, I don't love you that much. No, instead, every time Jesus says, yes, Lord, I love you. That's the point. I think that Jesus is asking Peter to confirm that his love for his Lord is more than his love for anything or anyone else. All three questions make the same point for Peter and for us. Is Jesus Christ your first love? Let's remember that Peter had said to Jesus in chapter 13, Hey, Jesus, I will lay down my life for you. I think now Jesus asked Peter, Peter, is that still your heart? And Peter says, yes, it is. And no matter the level of the love, the calling from Jesus is still the same. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Christ first called Peter to be an evangelist. Now he adds shepherding to the mission. Because you see, evangelism and discipleship must go together. Both are important in building Christ's church. Dr. Mark Rutland tells us of a survey that was taken several years ago. Uh, several thousand Americans were asked, what do they most want to hear from other people? And the number one answer, it's not a surprise, the number one answer that we want to hear from others is, I love you. And the second answer, the second answer is not a surprise either. The second answer we want to hear from others is, I forgive you. And the third answer, there's a bit more of a shock according to the survey. The third answer, according to those who were surveyed, is I want to hear that supper is ready. <laughs> supper is ready. But, but, but if you think for just a second, that's not far off from the gospel as is summarized here in chapter 21, where we hear Jesus say, I love you. I forgive you. Come into my relationship and dine with me. So how can we show our love and our gratitude to Christ? By fishing for men, by following Jesus, and by feeding others. We can show our love for Christ by fishing for men, by sharing the gospel, the good news. We can show our love for Christ by following Jesus, by following his way. 
and not the world's way. We can show our love for Christ by feeding others, feeding others with what has nourished us, the very bread of life. Hey guys, supper's ready. Will you follow Christ by loving lavishly and by following faithfully and by serving selflessly? I hope so. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Father God, wow, what a lesson. Drive it home to our hearts, Father, that we love you for all that you have done for us and for who you are. Help us, Father, to, to shower that love on others by showing them how much we love you, by following you, by feeding others with what they need most, and that is you. Father, give us people that we can fish with. Give us people that we can draw near to you. Give us people that we can show how much you love them. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.